Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to another Fallout 4 mod review. Today we're actually checking out two different mods, both of which are going to add some retro rifles into Fallout 4, both of which are going to also be by another one, aka Retro Paladin. Those two rifles are going to be the BAR M1918A2, also known as the Browning Automatic Rifle, and also the VZ-52, both of which, again, by another one, aka Retro Paladin. Now, the reason that we're taking a look at both of these mods together in one video is because they share a lot of similarities, like their attachments, their acquisition, and in some of their functionalities. So it just makes sense to cover them both at the same time and kill two birds with one stone. So let's talk a little bit about each of these rifles. The first of which, like we said, was the BAR M1918. This is something that people have been wanting for a long time. There are a couple versions out there already, but they are a little bit outdated compared to some of the standards of more current mods. This version of the Browning features a good bit of customization, including a bunch of different modern sights and suppressors, as well as some different stock and barrel options, and the ability to switch fire mode from semi-auto to full auto. Same goes for the VZ-52, lots of attachments, some similar optics, as well as that semi-auto and full auto functionality, and this has some really cool bayonet options as well. These rifles both come with fully custom animations, we'll go ahead and let those play now so you can see what they look like and also hear the custom sounds. Now, both of these weapons are added to the level list, so you will be able to find them out in the world on enemies. However, there are also some static spawns that you can go find them at. Both of these can be found at Fort Hagen on the roof, where you will find two dead soldiers who each have one of the rifles. The VZ-52 will be up on a ledge, and then the Browning Automatic Rifle will be just down below it. Now, to get a sense for how each of these weapons is actually going to perform, let's go ahead and get a look at their stats. Here we have the Browning Automatic Rifle. It has a base damage of 22, shoots 308 rounds, has a fire rate of 54 as I currently have it configured in a fully automatic. It has a range of 107, an accuracy of 77, a weight of 13.1 pounds, and a value of 153 caps. Keeping in mind that my character has no perks, so these are the raw stats of the weapon itself. As for the VZ-52, we have a base damage of 20, this guy is shooting at 5mm rounds, meaning it's going to do a bit less damage than the Browning Automatic. This one has a fire rate of 100 and is still in semi-auto, so you're going to be able to fire this thing pretty much as fast as you can pull the trigger. It has a range of 119, an accuracy of 76, a weight of 12.6 pounds, and a value of 121 caps. Now, before we jump into the attachments, there is one other feature I want to show off, and that is the new ammo counter. So, another one has also released an ammo counter framework, which is actually a dependency of both of these rifles. So, as you can see, there are now fully functional ammo counters that you can apply at the attachment menu. And they actually work. As you fire, you see that the bullet count goes down, which is really cool. Now, there's two different variations of this. You have the side-mounted one, which we can see here on the VZ-51. And there is also a rear-mounted one with some cool Nixie tube options. And you can actually customize these a good bit at the weapons attachment workbench, so let's go ahead and check those out now. Let's go ahead and start with the Browning automatic rifle here, starting with the receivers. Here we have your standard allotment of receivers from your both semi-auto and fully auto variants, from standard all the way up to powerful for both. Nothing special to look at here, this is pretty much the same as vanilla. For barrels, we have the short barrel, the commando barrel, which is even shorter, and then the standard barrel, which is nice and long. If we equip the standard barrel, we actually do get some other options later. For stocks, we have the short stock, the full stock, the marksman stock, and the recoil compensating stock. For magazines, we have the 20 round mag, the 45, and the 35 round magazines. For sights, we do have a good handful of sights here. We have the standard sights, the unfolded sights, which give you a nice sight picture right there, the ACOG, the Aimpoint T1, the Battlefield Reflex, which is going to mimic the Battlefield 5 style reflex sight, the Cobra Reflex, the Nidar Reflex, the OKP-7, the Barska, the Seymour, the Delta Point, the EOTech 552, the EXPS-3, the Sig Sauer Romeo-3, the Spectre DR, the SRS-02, and the Ultra Shot. 
For muzzles, we have the options for some different compensators and muzzle brake, like the CQB compensator, the DTK1 and 2 muzzle brakes, the KX3 compensator, the SIL9 silencer, and the SUPTAC suppressor. We do have some different firing modes, so here you see F and A. A is going to give you an increased fire rate, and F is going to give you slower fire rate, but better control, more mimicking the original BAR fire rate. We do have some accessories that we can add, like a bipod, a carrying handle, a carrying handle and bipod, or the option for none. We do have the option to add glow sights to our iron sights if we so please. And then here we have those ammo counters. So you have the digital ammo counter on the rear, also with a second variation. Then the Nixie tube ammo counter on the rear, also with a different variation. And then the option for no ammo counter. Then we also have side ammo counters. So here we have digital, digital with the pistol ammo icon, rifle ammo, and shotgun ammo. And then also that alternate version that also has the different pistol, rifle, and shotgun ammo icons. And then we also have some Nixie tubes that you can mount to the side. Now, unlike from the rear, you actually have some other options like the tubular ammo counter, which has a nice little cylinder mounted to the side like that. Pretty cool. And then finally, we do have some damage modifiers from zero all the way up to 90%, just in case you need to beef it up for your load order. So how about the VZ-52? Well, receivers are going to be exactly the same with both semi and full auto variants. For the barrels, you have standard, short, and long. For the stock, you have a full stock, marksman stock, recoil compensating, and short stock. You do have a 10, 20, and 30 round magazine. For the sights, you have all of these same sights as before. For the muzzles, again, all of the same compensators and suppressors that were available but you also get the option to add the built-in bayonet, which is a pretty cool thing to make this special. We do have the option for glow sights for our iron sights. You do get all of those same ammo counters as on the BAR. Again, with those left side ammo counters as well. And then also damage modifiers from zero to 90%. So a pretty similar attachment suite as the BAR, which is why they were released together. And again, why they were featured together in this video. And then finally for today's video, we're going to be doing our damage tests. We're going to take each of these weapons with their most powerful semi-automatic and fully automatic receivers, and then we're going to test them on a Deathclaw. So starting from the left, we're going to have the VZ-52 with its semi-automatic receiver. And we got it down with exactly one 30 round magazine pretty nice, and it helps that we can pull the trigger as fast as we need to. Let's see how it does in full auto. And with that lesser damage, we do have to get a reload in, and then two more shots to put it down. Pretty interesting. Let's see how we do with the browning, this time in semi-auto. Really helps having those high damage 308s, puts it down in many less bullets. Let's see how we do finally with the full auto browning. With this particular variant, we had that advanced fire rate on, so we put down that death claw super quick. Nice. These are definitely going to perform very, very well. And that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. Definitely two super cool retro rifles from another one. I'd highly recommend checking these out for yourself. If you'd like to, they'll be linked down in the description below. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to drop a rating, subscribe if you haven't already for more videos just like this, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace! And really quick, I'd like to make a shout out to all of our patrons. Your donations are greatly appreciated and really help to support the channel and videos just like this one. So again, thank you!